Hey guys, what's up, it's Eiflin here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my 100% status chance build for the Tigris Prime. Now, if you guys don't already know, the Tigris Prime is probably one of the most used weapons within Warframe at the minute because of how powerful it actually is whenever you get that 100% status chance. Now, it's not just hitting 100% status chance, it's not as simple as that because, like, with everything else in Warframe, it has to be a tiny bit complicated for it to be good, if that makes any sense. Um, but basically, with shotguns, status this chance works in a completely different way uh, to like regular weapons, right? So most weapons are going to have like a base status chance. So let's say 33%, for example, you know, 33% of the time where 33% of the bullets you fire are going to have the chance to proc a status chance such as like lighting an enemy on fire or stripping their armor away if you're using corrosive damage, things like that, right? With shotguns, if you have like status chance which is below 100%, then how it's going to work is the status chance is going to be split between all the pellets that you shoot out, right? So it's going to be divided equally between the amount of pellets that your shotgun fires out. But if you're able to hit 100% status chance before multi-shot, now that's a very important point. If you're able to hit that 100% status chance before you put multi-shot on your weapon, then every single pellet that you fire will have 100% status chance. So if you're shooting out like 10 pellets and you have slash damage as your predominant damage type, then those 10 pellets will all proc a slash proc, right? Which is insane, uh, especially whenever it comes to like, let's say you're using corrosive damage. If you shoot out 10 uh, pellets, which all deal like a status corrosive effect, then you're going to strip an enemy's armor within no time. So uh, just to demonstrate how powerful this actually is, I'm going to um, use my corrosive and blast build versus a level 150 heavy gunner and watch how fast we strip away uh, their armor, okay? So we're going to simulate them. We're going to use my Haro's 1 to sort of hold him in place, and then we're going to shoot at him, and you're going to see that he's going to lose armor every time we fire, and he's going to be, like, easier to kill, right? So, we're dealing more damage. Okay, so of course we didn't strip all of his armor, but you've seen those corrosive effects, right? You've seen those slash effects and all that other stuff. And um, basically all that means is, like, they're losing armor and they're going to take more damage from things like your slash procs, etc. So, let's just go ahead and demonstrate that again, how fast we're killing this enemy. Keep in mind, this guy's level 150, so he has a lot of armor, okay? So here we go, and you see every time that we fire again, we're dealing more and more damage. We also have those slash prots going on in the background, which makes it a very insane weapon. So, just to show you guys the build, and I'm also going to show you guys that I have actually indeed hit 100% multi- uh, or 100% status chance before multi-shot. So let's just go ahead and, you know, go back into it, get rid of all those red numbers, but... um. Basically, you just throw on Shell Shock, Toxic Barge, Scattering Inferno, and Frigid Blast. You get your 100% status chance, and then there you go. That is basically it. So, you can replicate this kind of effect. Like, if you were able to get, like, a Riven mod, for example, with, um, uh, like, let's say for the Comb, and you got, like, status chance on it, and you had, like, minus damage to, like, Infested or something. Just some weird random, uh, you know, negative stat, which will make your other stats better. Uh, then you'll be able to replicate this effect on a shotgun like the Comb, right? Which fires many pullet, uh, many pellets, <laughs> many uh, pellets, and uh, is actually like very fast fire rate and can get some insane DPS. So you know this is the build. Uh, prime point strike on here for our damage, of course, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw on our what's it called again? Our Hell's Chamber for a multi shot, which is gonna increase our damage, basically doubling it. Uh, sweep and serration on here to make slash our predominant. Um, our predominant damage type and the reason we threw this on is because like whenever you strip away the enemy's armor then slash is going to become more of a viable option for you because like it's just going to eat away at the enemy's health and because the enemy has no armor they're not resistant to slash damage and it just makes it a lot better to sort of mod for if that makes any sense so you should run this on a weapon well you should only really run this on a, on a weapon if it makes up if slash damage makes up 90% of the weapon's total damage, okay? So that's my understanding of it. Because keep in mind, this is taking 120% off your slash damage and then adding it on top. And because slash is the predominant um, damage type on this weapon anyway, that's what we go 
go ahead and run, but it also makes up a very significant portion of the weapon's damage, so that's the only reason we're running it. Usually you wouldn't run IPS mods, but this is like a very specific case. Uh, Seeking Fury on here, because this is actually going to increase your DPS, because you have higher reload speed, you also have punch free, meaning you don't have to shoot as many shots, uh, stuff like that, so it just it's a good mod, and it makes the weapon feel a lot better. And then obviously you have your elementals, and uh, these are only your dual stat. You don't throw any 90% on here, because throwing those 90% percent on i mean if you don't have the dual stats sure fine go for it but you're missing out on a lot of damage if you don't run the dual stats with the tigger's prime at least in my opinion so uh you can run this build if you're going against enemies which have um armor or you can run the radiation viral build if you're going against enemies which don't have armor okay so this is if you're running uh four times corrosive projection and uh the enemies will have absolutely no armor at all okay so you that's very important um but you can also use this here like versus bombards or whatever so you know radiation is pretty good and obviously you have your viral proc as well which is also pretty neat too so yeah, that is basically it. Uh, let's go ahead and use the uh, the viral build versus a bombard, or not a viral build, sorry, but the the radiation build. So let's just go ahead, chain this guy up like so, and you'll be able to see the damage. So there you go, very insane damage. Plus you have the slash proc. So realistically, all you have to do is like fire one um, one pellet or whatever, or one burst of the Tigger's Prime, and the enemies basically just die. So. Uh, and even better, like if you were to swap to a Warframe that had the ability to strip away armor, just gonna go ahead and swap to a better looking Ash as well. That's not that one. This one, okay, just making sure that we look professional in the video. Fashion Frame is uh, Fashion Frame's endgame, so here we go. And then you have your Seeking Shuriken build, which is my config C, and you strip away the enemy's armor. So if we could get out of here, there we go. So let's go ahead. Spawn in our bombard again. Get all of our energy up. And we're going to use our one to strip away his armor. We basically one shot them. So it's pretty insane. You know, you have 15k damage in your slash alone. And then you have another 20k damage in your uh, impact and puncture around the bite. And then you obviously have another like. Oh, wait, sorry. Wrong way around. You have another 20k damage in your elements. You have another 2k damage in your impact and puncture. And then you have 15k damage in slash. So it makes it very insane, you know? So it's it's an insane build. And there's no reason not to pick up the Tigger's Prime just because of how it works. Like, you can buy a Tigger's Prime set for 30 Platinum. And I believe you're able to use the weapon at Master Rank 13. And by Master Rank 13, you should have, like, you know, an Equinox main build, or you should have, like, I don't know, um, a Mesa with a Peacemaker build and a standard crit build on your secondaries, which should, should allow you to farm most of these mods, right? Because you get Toxic Barge from Corrupted Vor. I don't know if you can get Shell Shock from the Hive Infested missions, like the Caches, uh, is either from there or you can get it from Borrow. You get Scattering Inferno and Rigid Blast from playing Spy Missions, and then the rest, like you can use regular Point, uh, point Blank on here, that's fine. Uh, Hell's Chamber, you can get that from a Spy Mission on Saturn if you get all free data extractions and you get lucky. Uh, Sweeping Serration, I mean, I believe you have to wait for Bar to come around before you can get that, or you buy it from another player. And then Seeking Fury is just a Nightmare mod, so you just keep on uh, rerunning Nightmare Missions to get it, and like... Like I said, it's an insane build. It can basically take down an entire group of enemies in no time, uh, like implying that you, you know, play it right. And if whenever you bring in, like, you know, your Warframe's abilities and stuff like that, so let's use Haro, for example, because he's one of my favorite frames to use the Tigger's Prime with because I have my Punch Free and stuff like that on. So let's say I'm playing um, a Auric in defense, so in, in the Void, right? Uh, what I can do is I can just stand with my Tigger's Prime at the defense point, and I can shoot through the little door that the enemies, like, run up from. So if you're at the defense point and you're looking down towards where you spawned at, there's, like, a little door which will open, and you can actually shoot through that with the Tigger's Prime. And because, like, the damage is so high, then, you know, it just basically makes it so that, you know, there, there's nothing that can get free, you know, and especially if you're running four times cruiser projection, which in that type of mission you really should be, then, uh, you know, it, it's going to be super easy. So I'm just going to go ahead and make myself not invincible. And I'm going to show you like the effects of uh, the Tigger's Prime when you're using a frame like Haro to kind of up your DPS even further. So just going to go ahead and get my energy. So with Haro, basically what you can do is you can like chain all the enemies up and that's going to get you a, a lot of shields. You can sacrifice your shields for a buff 
and then you can make your Tigger's Prime even more insane. So you're up in the DPS because you have like this insane reload speed with it too. So let's go ahead and chain these guys up again. We can sacrifice again. And not to mention like you get all these other buffs. So you have like Banshee Sonar buff if you're using that. You can also have like, what else is there? Like a Chroma self damage build if you're using that. Like that'll work too. And you have the crit chance coming from, um, what's it called here? Haro. So you can get orange crits with it. So there's so many ways that you can buff up your damage and make this thing like just one hit potential. We just got a red crit right there. That was insane. So you also use your, uh, your cat. I forget the name of it. It's like a Darza or something. So insane damage can come out of the Tigris Prime if you're using it right and stuff like that. And it's just an insane weapon, honestly. Like there's no reason not to pick it up. And if you haven't got it, then I recommend picking it up because I believe, actually, I don't think it's going to get vaulted anytime soon, but it will get vaulted eventually. So it just makes sense to pick it up as soon as possible. Uh, even if you're not Master Rank 13, at least have one set like sitting waiting for you for whenever you do eventually hit Master Rank 14 because this weapon will make your life so much easier implying you know how to build it. So I recommend picking it up. I recommend getting all the mods for it and I recommend just like using it <laughs> as much as you possibly can until you get bored of it and then uh, want to move on to a different weapon. So it's an insane gun. Definitely pick it up. Make use of your Warframe's abilities and uh, it's, it's, it's a god gun may not be the best gun in the game, may not be the best for every single scenario, like it kind of sucks versus nullifiers if you're not hitting the little drone, but, um, you know, definitely pick it up, but uh, thank you guys for watching, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead, hit that like button below, if you want to see more Warframe content from me, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.